There are seven things that smart realtors do not do in their business, which is why they become so successful, which means that if you are doing any of these seven things I'm about to walk through, your chances of success dramatically decrease. Now, I've had the pleasure of studying hundreds of top producing agents that I've been able to work with, and I've audited what they don't do in order to make sure that they're successful. And I've also had the pleasure of working with thousands of struggling agents and been able to identify that they're usually doing these things and I want you to succeed. So today I'm gonna to walk through all of these seven things and what you need to make sure that you're avoiding if you wanna be one of those smart, successful agents. What's up, my name is Mike Sherwood with eXp Realty. I train thousands of agents every year and I'm excited to put you on the path to success today. Now you need to make sure that you're avoiding all of these things because again, smart, successful agents simply do not do any of these. But almost every time I've talked to a struggling agent, they fall victim to one or usually many of these. And I want to make sure that you are not one of those. Okay, so these are going to get increasingly important as we go on, especially as we get to about four to seven. But let's kick things off with something that is incredibly important as well, which is that most smart agents don't focus solely on leads. You see, where a lot of the agents go wrong that are struggling is they always focus on leads. They always feel like they've got a lead problem. The truth of the matter is, is you can follow my, one of my Facebook ad tutorials and be generating leads within 24 hours. Or one of my Google ad tutorials and be generating leads within probably a couple of days that are high quality. It's not a lead problem. Leads are very easy to get. If you just talk to people, run the right ads, put up the right content, that is not hard to do. I've got tons of videos showing you how to do it. Where people go wrong is they have a lead conversion problem. And that comes down to proper follow-up, communication skills, scripting, objection handling. Okay, so where so many people go wrong is let's say an agent generated 100 leads and they closed one deal. Their assumption usually is that they need to generate 200 leads to close two deals. Well, what if you just got better communication and follow-up and converting and you closed two out of the 100 leads or three out of the 100 leads? You just doubled or tripled your income with the same number of leads. And so what smart agents do is they focus on converting. And what can they do differently when it comes to follow-up email drip campaigns, leveraging their CRM and follow-up strategies in order to make sure that they're converting at a higher rate? So it's not always about generating more leads. Really what it comes down to, if you wanna be a smart, successful agent, is it comes down to converting leads at a higher rate. Number two is a really dangerous one. I fell victim to this straight out the gate as a new agent, and I understand why you might fall victim to this if you are struggling. And that is counting commission checks before the deal is firm, fixed, final, closed. And it could be really enticing. Maybe you've got a deal under contract and you start counting the commission check. Oh my God, it's gonna be eight, 10, $15,000. Um, all that that does is set you up for massive disappointment because at some point, might not be today, but at some point you're gonna count that commission check, the deal's gonna fall through, and now you're gonna be left being disappointed. And this has been a principle that I've started to really embrace over the last number of years that's made a big difference in my business is I don't take people's word for something, I wait for the actions to happen. I don't talk about anything until it's done. I don't count any income until it's in the bank account. And what that leaves you to do is mitigate disappointment. And if you start to get into this habit, like many successful agents do, where they just focus on the next activity they need to do in order to get the job done and wait for things to be proven or firm, fixed, final, you're gonna avoid a lot of stress. Three is an incredibly important one, which is not adapting. Every successful agent that I see, let's look at the NAR settlement for example, they are breaking it down, studying it, auditing it, and looking at preparing themselves and their business for a best and a worst case scenario. So that that way, if it's a worst case scenario, they're prepared, if it's a best case scenario, they're over prepared and they're still gonna win either which way. When you look at agents who are struggling, they're the ones that are going on all these Facebook groups saying, oh, the NAR settlement is not gonna be that big of a deal they are going to get their ass kicked. And so what you really need to do is make sure if you wanna be successful, that you always expect the worst. If you always prepare the worst, you're always going to be either prepared or overprepared. Where a lot of struggling agents go is down the road of ignoring things until it becomes a problem, until it becomes an issue. And by that point, it's usually too late. That's very similar to 
agents ignoring AI, right? If you want to know how to leverage AI to clone yourself, save thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours and never need a virtual assistant or a marketing manager, drop a comment below and just say GPT and I'll send it to you. We've got a full one hour free training uh, that breaks it down. It's unbelievable uh, with my business partner, Adam Gillespie. He's the most intelligent agent when it comes to AI that I've ever seen. But regardless, this is agents saying AI doesn't matter. ChatGPT, it's, it's not practical. Well, it is. And when you start looking at any of these things that are changing in the landscape of the real estate industry, smart, successful agents adapt. They become aware, they learn, they study, and they adapt. Every time I've seen an agent struggle, they're not leveraging social media. They're ignoring AI. They're treating the NAR settlement as it's gonna be nothing, not gonna impact much of the business at all. And that might be the case. Maybe it's not that bad. But if you're not prepared for the worst of what could happen, you're going to get screwed every single time. So it's really important that as things change in the industry, as new technology starts to become available, you really need to become adapting to that and understand that this is gonna be critical if you wanna stay one step ahead of the competition. Now, number four, getting into the more interesting ones, is focusing on the next deal instead of focusing on the deals you've already closed. Struggling agents are always focusing on the next deal. Successful agents are always nurturing the deals they've already closed. Big difference here. I see a lot of agents that are struggling that finish a deal and then they're right on to the next one. And they basically ignore the previous client that they just worked with. Well, who do you think are gonna be the best repeat and referral clients? The ones you've just worked with. So you're gonna spend way less money on marketing, way less effort on advertising, you're going to be way more profitable, and you're gonna convert way higher because introductions are gonna be warm or you've already over-delivered on the experience with them. But new agents and struggling agents are always chasing the next deal. And that's where you see smart agents end up transitioning to the point over years where they're able to build a business that is just based on repeat and referral because they, yes, focus on getting another deal, but they don't ignore the clients that they've already worked with. And the clients you've already worked with are actually far more important than the next deal because there's a stat that says that if you properly nurture your clients, they should turn into about seven deals over the lifespan of your career. That is from repeat and referral. So where that leaves us is that if you're focusing only on the next deal, you're trying to grow your business one by one by one. If you're smart, you're gonna become successful because you're gonna grow by seven by seven by seven. And that is a really important delineation for you to make and make sure that you're not falling short. That's why the stat is over 80% of people don't work with the realtor that they worked with previously. Well, now that you're a real estate agent, you don't wanna be the realtor that they don't work with in the future. You wanna be the one they continue to choose, repeat clients, and also refer you like crazy. Number five, what smart, successful agents don't do is focusing on the activities that are the easiest and most fun to do. What they focus on is the things that they know they need to do. And what that boils down to is you see smart agents and I've worked with many that are closing over 100 deals a year. They all become the master at the basics, right? It's like you look at the videos that you'll find of Kobe Bryant, you know, rest in peace, an absolute legend in basketball. There's all those videos of him at 3.30 in the morning at the gym and he's doing layups, dribbling practice, shooting within range, not doing crazy things, not throwing court long shots, not dunking. He's just doing the right things, the basic fundamentals over and over and over again. And he became the best. And that's what smart successful agents do as well, is they understand that if prospecting is what got them to the point that they are, they need to just keep prospecting and keep drilling down the fundamentals. The ones that become successful usually aren't the ones doing the funnest, flashiest, sexiest things. They just have the basics dialed. And that means it's very simple to do that. It's just not easy because it's not the fun activities. It's not the most enjoyable. You are gonna get rejected and it can be exhausting. 
But the ones that win fall in love with doing the boring things and they never get bored doing it. Where struggling agents get hung up is that they're always searching for the next trend, the next easy thing to do. Oh, I, I'm just gonna be busy by designing this thing on Canva instead of prospecting. It's, it's, it's somehow gonna move my business forward. What they do is they convince themselves that that activity is gonna move the needle of their business, but it really won't because you have no clients that marketing you just created, that advertising isn't gonna do a heck of a lot. So you need to focus on the high return on investment activities, the high income producing activities, and stop getting distracted by all the fun new trends or tips or tricks or whatever anybody else is doing that gives you this kind of excitement that you might be able to find a shortcut in real estate. I'm here to tell you, there is no shortcut in building a successful real estate business. Now that leads perfectly to number six, which is that smart, successful agents don't stop doing what got them to where they are today. And let me give you an example. There's an incredible woman I know, Gail DeMarco, and she built her business on cold calling. And she's doing 60 plus deals a year, absolutely crushing it. And she still cold calls every day for three hours a day. Most people would say, oh my God, you're doing 60 deals a year. Well, you shouldn't have to cold call anymore. But the winners keep doing what got them there, right? It's even with me with my YouTube channel. Ever since I built Momentum, I just keep putting out more and more and more and better and better content. Because as you continue to do things more, you get better at it, I meaning you convert higher, meaning for the same amount of time, your business scales. That's how smart, successful agents grow. But where a lot of agents go wrong is, and this is why they struggle, they start to get a bit of momentum. Maybe they close two, three, four, five deals, and they did that via maybe cold calling or door knocking or something that was proactive in nature. And then they're like, damn, I'm exhausted. I don't wanna do this anymore, but I got some deals in the pipeline, so maybe I'm, I'm just gonna start transitioning to something more fun or something easier, or I'm just gonna you know, service these people and, and wait for the next referral. But that's not it, because as quickly as those deals come, the pipeline dries up again and you go right back to scratch. And I've seen this countless times where agents build momentum and then they stop doing what got them there and they go right back to rock bottom. If you find something that works and it's bringing you clients, when it starts to work, don't back off, double and triple down like all smart, successful agents. Number seven, lastly, this is something I will forever shout to the mountaintop, which is smart agents don't look at other agents like competition. I see so many weak-minded, terrible agents, and all that they do is talk shit about other agents, are negative about other agents, talking behind the scenes badly about other people, and trying to outdo others, and always looking at competition. Smart, successful agents understand other agents are going to be the ones you're doing your freaking deals with. And that if you have great relationships with other agents, the deals are probably gonna go smoother. And if it's a multiple offer situation, they might just put your offer a little bit ahead of the other ones because they want to work with you. But if you're being negative and you're always talking badly about other people and you're trying to one up and show off and you know just really pump your chest, which I unfortunately witness all the time myself in my own market, it's always the local agents that are talking the most shit instead of supporting, well, you're never gonna wanna do a deal with them. And so struggling agents are always looking at others as competition. Winners look at other agents as motivation if they're doing less deals than the others they're looking at, or as partners in the industry that they will hopefully do a deal with one day and be able to have a smooth transaction. So if you have any opinions on this, I would love to know your thoughts. If there's anything that you see smart agents doing that struggling agents aren't, or vice versa, things that struggling agents need to avoid. Drop a comment, let me know, because I'd love to hear your perspective on this. If you have any questions, again, I'm here to help. Otherwise, check out this next video, because if you want a roadmap of building a wildly successful business, now that you've avoided some of the things that you shouldn't be doing, Check out this next video and it'll give you the roadmap.